leap testing is back this spring. We had a, a, a kind of a year off last year, so it's been about two years since we've done it. Will it be as meaningful this year as it used to be, or is it kind of just kind of a trial run? I actually think in, in many ways this year it's going to be more meaningful. You know, we, we haven't assessed in two years, uh, and we need to know where our kids are. Um, you know, I'm a dad myself. You know, you know that, and mm-hmm. and I want to know where my own kids are. So, so yeah, I think it's uh, pretty important this year to make sure that as many kids as possible have the opportunity to take that test, uh, and then we can make important decisions from there. But schools, nor will teachers, be held accountable for the leap test this year. Is that accurate? Well, I, look, we've we've made what I believe are, are reasonable accommodations throughout the year. So, so one of the first things that that we were able to do is. Uh, we put in place a policy for this year where teachers would not be held accountable for the for the value added uh, growth requirement uh, of their students on the test. So that you know provided some relief there. Uh, you know we also provided relief around school systems so that some of the most negative consequences applied to the test, such as you know your school going into a, a label like comprehension comprehensive intervention needed, uh, those would not be uh, applied this year. You know. Uh, promotion and graduation requirements have essentially been suspended uh, related to the assessment this year. We, we've worked to uh, create alternate pathways for, for seniors who have not yet passed one of their required uh, tests to graduate. So I think we've met the moment in, in terms of a number of flexibilities, and including weekend testing options, after-hours testing options, and even off-site options. So uh, that that's where we stand as of today. Apologies for waxing negative, but not only in Louisiana, I guess, but all over the country. Is is this kind of standardized testing, at least this year, just a measure to see how far behind everybody's fallen? Well, I mean, I I, I don't I don't know that I would would be that negative around it. I mean, I, I do think that we we will have some recovery uh, that has to take place and some acceleration of learning that has to take place. I think we're already doing that. Uh, you know, we we have rolled out you know, guidance on this summer of how to address summer programming. You know, my, my expectation is that systems across the state would, would have, you know, full day, robust summer programming this year, full of electives such as art and music, PE, recess, and then pull kids off to the side for small group tutoring and, and math and reading and science and social studies. Have we, you know, we get a lot of complaints. I know you've heard this for years, long before you were the, the, the head cheese, about the teachers spend a lot of time teaching for the test. Is that still going on now in our schools? Are we kind of working to, to get away from that? Well, I, I, think the, I think the question is probably wrong in there, and I've heard it for a long time. But, I mean, do, do you want teachers to teach things that aren't on the test? I mean, what, what's the alternative? I mean, I think the things that we test are important. Does four plus four equal, equal eight? Mm-hmm. You know, and so you spend the year teaching four plus four equals eight. Um, so I, I understand how that can get a bad rap. And I, I do think whenever teachers spend too much time simply on test preparation strategies, that's that's not a good thing. Uh, but but whenever we're teaching content, you know, to, to help people understand how to read or, or, or know facts and rationale behind history. I mean, I, I think those are good things. And if they're on the test, you know, there should be some alignment between those things. You also sent me a text this morning that's really interesting that uh, from the American Enterprise Institute with regard to Louisiana's reopening plan. Talk a little bit about that, because that, I didn't realize we were as aggressive as we have been. Yeah, I, I think this is good news. Not not everybody might think this is good news, but we we have been following the science on this, but a- aggressive in terms of our reopening this year. The American Enterprise Institute, which you guys know is a pretty conservative uh, group, uh, put out a report saying that Louisiana had the eighth most aggressive reopening plan in America, and and had you know I think the fifth most students in daily face to face instruction across the country. So. You know, I'm, I'm pretty proud of that because, you know, leaders and teachers and, and boards and, and parents have all had to work together to make that happen. And I would put, while there have been frustrations and while it has not been perfect, I would, I would put what our educational community has done up against anything in this country. 